G'day everybody, welcome back to another episode of Paddlecast, quarantine edition, the new daily podcast from Sup Racer. Yes, we're really doing one of these every single day, I'm not sure what I signed up for either, but uh, it's been fun, uh, it's nice to chat with the paddlers all around the world and I love, uh, you know, I love finding out what they're up to and some of the stories they've experienced over the years from their paddling career and hopefully it's a fun way for you guys to stay connected, stay a little bit entertained and motivated while we're all stuck indoors for the next several years several months. Uh, I'm slowly getting faster at producing, recording, setting up these podcasts. The first couple of days this week, I was literally up all night, as you can see if you look closely at my eyes. Uh, but we're getting there, folks. I'm committed to these. It's my commitment to you. Every single day, we're going to have an episode of Paddlecast Quarantine Edition. And today's guest, um, coincidentally, it's another Paddle Monster coach. We just had Larry Kane yesterday. That was a really interesting chat. And now we've got another Paddle Monster Guru Seychelles, all the way from over there in Florida. Had a good chat with Seychelles, uh, talked about her competitive career, her coaching, some of the colorful language that gets thrown around when the women are going around the buoy turns, uh, her dream to sail off into the sunset on a boat, and uh, plenty of other things. So we'll get straight into it. And just a quick heads up, Club Sup Racer, it's incoming in a few days, uh, early next week, I'm going to launch the new members only version of Club Sup Racer. All these paddle cast episodes, they're always going to be free. Everything on Sup Racer is going to be free, but Club Sup Racer is going to be a new special little feature. Members only, folks. We're going to do, uh, basically, the long story short is that um, we've got to find a more creative way to fund Sup Racer. Uh, so that's the plan with Club Sup Racer. You can pay like a dollar a week or a few bucks a week and become basically a patron of Sup Racer. We're going to use this new platform called Patreon which is really cool. Um, it's becoming really popular with a lot of artists and uh, those kind of, you know, creative folks who um, I'm not sure if I qualify as one of the creative artists out there, but I'm going to claim it for now anyway. Um, so yeah, Patreon, Sup Racer. Look out for it next week. Club, Sup Racer. I will bribe you to join. We're going to have a few cool members only benefits, but mainly it's just for those if you would like to support uh, what Sup Racer is doing. Keep this good ship rolling. Um, all right. Speaking of rolling... We also do a little another sneak peek at the new Marble Racer World Tour <laughs> that we're coming out within a few weeks. Uh, you'll definitely hear a lot more about that in a week or two. Basically, I'm losing my mind not being able to call sup races. I was supposed to be in Tahiti last week for Air France. Uh, and then over the next six months, I'd basically be on the road every week around the world um, at an event. A lot of those I'd be live streaming and that's kind of my happy place. I love being out there on the boat, you know, with the camera and gimbal in hand, just screaming at the top of my lungs uh, as the top men and women do their thing. I know it's really entertaining for a lot of people to watch at home. I know a lot of you enjoy the live streams. So we're going to try and come up with a replacement for that. It's going to be a little bit of fun. It's going to be extremely silly, um, but hopefully it's a little bit entertaining. Basically, we've got all these little marbles here. A couple of them on screen. If you're watching on YouTube, I've painted up... Uh, a couple of dozen racing marbles and named them after all the top ranked athletes, some of my favorite legends from the sport. And we're just going to do a silly little marble racer tour. Um, the first event is going to be the Marble Liner Cup that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Club Sup Racer next week. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, Seychelles. Seychelles, direct from Florida. Welcome to the show. Just talking about um, children in the uh, in the lobby there. How are you? How are you surviving the zombie apocalypse over there? Hi, <laughs> yeah, we're surviving. You know, it's um, it's an interesting time, definitely. But I live in the best place I could possibly imagine being. So we're definitely. Um, you know, just, I, I'm, actually, I'm doing really great, and I'm just trying to do my best to make sure the else is, is doing great, too. You've been uh, very active. It is funny that you call it zombie ap apocalypse. It does yeah. kind of feel like the end of the world. <laughs> it's a little surreal, isn't it? People are acting like it's the end of the world. But the cool thing is, in all and those... I think, like, well, like I was going to say, like you mentioned, it's definitely, I don't think it's the end of the world, but it's a, it's a change in the world. Mm. Yeah. I th we're not going, I think ever, a lot of people are saying, oh, when are we going back, you know, back to normal? We're never going back to normal. Like it's going to be a new normal when we come through this, which I think is good because it's an opportunity to create something new um, and get creative. Or we and could get really deep and say it, what's normal? Has there ever been normal? 
right now could be normal because what's happening at any given time is what's normal, right? So normal is constantly evolving. Is this, um, did you study philosophy <laughs> in college? Are we getting deep? I did study the philosophy. The first five minutes of the show, <laughs> Seychelles. <laughs> Don't get me started on the simulation theory. We'll be here all day. But um, you've been you've been very active. You've been getting out there with Paddle Monster every day, keeping the community stoked. You, we were joking last night that you're busier now that you don't really have a job to do on the water. It's kind of ironic. Yeah, I've been super busy. I've been busier than ever um, because I just my role i think as you know as an athlete as a role model and especially now as a coach is really important i just i have a lot to share especially in times like this and it's and it's interesting though because i've been sharing my typical you know i'm still doing my online coaching with paddle monster and then paddle monster we started like three weeks ago um, with doing Facebook Live every single day mm. just to give people who were and still are, you know, sitting at home, freaking out, something educational, entertaining, and uplifting to to watch. So that's still going on every day at 3 p.m. on the Paddle Monster Facebook page. Larry Kane's doing Get on there, a couple episodes a week. I'm doing a couple of episodes a week, sometimes three episodes a week. And it's been really fun because, like I said, I'm doing a lot of the traditional, you know, well, Larry's doing a lot more of the traditional land drills, ways to improve your paddling, even if you're, you know, stuck at home. I don't like using the word stuck, but, um, and then I've been doing a lot more uh, yoga and mindfulness and breathing. And I've even done like at home workouts and balance and core and just whatever we think that will be entertaining and uplifting and fun and educational for people. And so I think the reason I've gotten more busy is because I realized that I actually have a lot more to give than I was giving back to this community. And um, I started doing, more, oh, you're looking through my Instagram. Yeah. I started have you been doing finding more plant-based. I've been finding a lot of Zen. Uh, this is a great time to practice finding Zen. And so basically a lot of what I've been trying to share with people are things that I've always practiced myself, but realized that I never really tried to teach these things. So now I'm trying to teach. I did my first meditation class. I did a talk on Zen and mindfulness and, um, and I love it. I mean, I love connecting with people. My favorite thing to do was to do clinics, in-person clinics, because I just love the energy of everybody. And so uh, the Facebook Live is, you know, you, you don't get much feedback, but you get a little bit of connection and just, you know, the energy of the community, trying to keep the community stoked, trying to keep everybody and happy. And, um, and yeah, so I've been doing it a lot because I really... Because I'm really enjoying it, and I think it's really helpful right now. Yeah. Yeah, we were joking the other day about how social media has turned social, finally. Just took a global pandemic yeah. to make Instagram healthy and Facebook Live healthy. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, you know, like you said, things are changing right now. There's a ton of people doing similar things to what Paddle Monster is doing um, in terms of, just putting all that we have always had an online platform where we're providing content to people, but with a monthly membership fee. And so now we're providing that to, to, to anyone for, for free who wants to, you know, follow along on the Facebook page. And I'm seeing that throughout every industry in, you know, globally, um, fitness instructors, yoga instructors. I mean, those are the ones that I kind of follow, but I think like, you know, like I said, it's, it's really, there's so much unmotivated sharing 
going on and it's and it's yeah. a beautiful thing but i do also think that's going to evolve because people need to start making money again right so we'll just yeah. it'll be interesting to see how it all keeps evolving yeah well what's uh what's your life looking like this year as opposed to last year like what would you have been doing right now getting ready for carolina cup yeah what's the date april april 9th Definitely we were just a couple of weeks from carolina, carolina. <laughs> yeah are you excited that you don't have to do the graveyard this year <laughs> you're relieved rather you no know, it's interesting when this first was starting to happen or at least when we were first starting to hear about it in the u.s i jokingly was like oh man that would be great i can just sit at home i don't have to go do races and then it started happening and i was like oh shoot <laughs> like you know, I just looked at my calendar yesterday. It's still up on my wall, all the events. April, I had an event, you know, because there's a lot, of, several events in Florida on the Florida Paddle League that were happening in April that I was going to be attending. And then, of course, leading up to Carolina Cup and um, the Euro Tour, was, I was going to go in May to Greece. So my calendar on the wall is still full of all those things. And I looked up yesterday and I went, wow yeah okay i'd be there right now or i'd be doing that right now and um and uh writing my online programs for paddlers i still have in their outlines which races they were going to be doing i'm like okay nope that's not you know it's just i'm you're constantly being reminded uh even though it is kind of easy now to lose track of the of the date because we yeah. don't have events coming up but it's I'm constantly reminded of, 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 yeah, it's definitely what I would be have normally been doing right now is, is getting ready for Carolina cup and it's, uh, it's, it's all good, right? It is, it is, it is in a lot of ways. I, I always look at the positive mm. and for me, the positive is I'm looking at what I'm able to be creating right now and providing right now and the energy that I feel right now. It's not that anything in my physical, you know, or the amount of energy that I have changed, but it's mentally the pressure of the traveling and the racing and all of that has been taken off. And so I'm just you know, the energy is switched from thinking about racing to just thinking about this sport in this community and keeping everybody going. So that's, there's a lot of positive that's coming out of this as well. There's been a lot of people supporting each other and um, mm. yeah, but we don't have to keep talking about it. About the I think, I think it's funny. <laughs> like the, <laughs> it's the, the response is, I think it's been overwhelmingly positive in society. It's like, you look at all those sci-fi horror movies. When something like this happens, society just turns on itself and it's like outlaw wild west. But in reality, like everyone's helping each other, staying connected and just trying to stay positive. So Hollywood kind of got that wrong, which is a relief. Yeah. But, um, well, if it doesn't get any better, we, uh, we have a plan. We have a plan B. We have a plan oh, yeah? C. Yeah. Can you share that? Or is it this, was always uh... actually my, it was actually always my plan A, uh, <laughs> which is just buy a boat and sail away. And, uh, oh. <laughs> and, and that plan changed when I started paddling because I transitioned from sailing background to paddling. And, um, you know, I always joke that now I captain like a, a 14 foot ship <laughs> as opposed to a, <laughs> you know, a 60 foot one. But, uh, my husband and I were like seriously like okay well you know what we could just go back to sailing and uh and if the world keeps ending then you know it'll be all good so if well, you don't good. hear from me for a while it's because we sailed away that's a pretty good backup to have <laughs> things really go bad are you are you riding the beach right now yeah, your, your place has got a beach, beach vibe yeah I live uh, I'm in Melbourne Beach. It's like central east coast of Florida. Most people have heard of Cocoa Beach because that's like where I'm Kelly, Kelly Slater. Slater is from. Yeah. So the famous surf break that made Kelly and a few other athletes from this area so such incredible surfers is actually 
three miles from my house, although they rebuilt the jetty and kind of ruined, ruined the peak. Um, however, that's, that's Sebastian Inlet and I live really close to Sebastian Inlet. That's like my training spot and my favorite surf spot. So, um, I live right on the beach and I live, we're really isolated out here. We're, we're pretty far outside of town. My closest neighbors are about a half mile in either direction. So if wow. there was anywhere in the world to be right now, it's my laughing. home. I'm like, oh, stay here. Okay, darn, you know, it's, um, and, and I feel, and I know how fortunate and I know how blessed I am. So I've been doing a lot of Instagram live just because I can be on the beach and I can be outside right now. And a lot of people are going crazy because they can't. And so I have a pretty regular morning following now that's coming out on the beach with me in the morning and watching the sunrise on my Instagram. And we're going on for walks on the beach together. <laughs> and me and my phone full of, of people who want to be at the beach. So I'm just doing what I can to give back and um, to share how fortunate I, I am right now to be where I am right now. And definitely, I mean, anytime, I, I don't own this house on the beach we rent. Um, I'm not like super wealthy, obviously. I'm a paddleboarder. But, <laughs> um, but, but, but anytime, you know, whether you're having a global pandemic or, or not, living on the beach is a wonderful place to be ironically though we were starting to complain that it's too quiet out here <laughs> right before all this happened we were kind of getting stir crazy because we don't have anything to do around here besides you know surfing and beaching and yeah, we don't terrible. have friends and 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 we <laughs> we don't have a social life and now i'm like gosh could it be any more perfect we don't have anything to do but go surfing and beaching we don't have any friends and we don't have a social life <laughs> so you've been so, practicing social distancing for months yeah for years <laughs> perfect yes yeah, like me i don't i don't go out that much yeah this is just another normal day um so what's your what are you missing this year the most because this is probably going to go on for several i mean let's face it this is most of the season will likely not happen uh what race yeah. are you going to miss the most? Like, what's your favorite race? Put it simply. Hmm. Just... Well, I'm hoping my favorite race still happens. And that's the Gorge. Um, yes. I just think that the whole week is so fun. And we hopefully maybe still have plans to go out there for weeks this year in August. Uh, we'll see what you know august brings around and i why do you love it we were i was planning to go to greece and do the euro tour and my whole family was coming and we rented a sailboat oh, and down. that's gotten canceled so i'm probably the most bummed about having to cancel the greece trip why is hood so. river your favorite what makes it special Hood <laughs> River is my favorite because it's so fun. The town, it's like a beach town in the mountains. It's so unique. <laughs> and That's a good description. Right? It's got like a, be a surfer yeah. beachy vibe. But you're surrounded by mountains, so you can also do all the mountain sports. And you just don't get that a lot of places. You have to choose. I'm going to be beach or I'm going to be mountain. But in Hood River, it's not beach. But it's got that vibe and it's got all the water sports, right? And the other reason is that my husband has totally fallen in love with Hood River. And that's his favorite event. And we do it together. And um, he likes paddling, but he doesn't love paddling. Yeah. But if it's a downwinder, he's 100% ready to go <laughs> so, so so i think it's just we've so just he's the smart the paddler couple years and had he's the smart paddler in this <laughs> relationship had so much clearly fun that we yeah right he's um yeah he's so smart. he's very he is very smart well i'd say the gorge is um hope, like hopefully it happens it's definitely the next one it's our firewall at the moment if the gorge falls right like, they that's, kind the, of that's all the last domino until that point <laughs> yeah 
It yeah. is. It is. So fingers crossed the gorge. I think if it happens, it would be an amazing party because everyone would be so stir crazy by them. So that would be right? pretty cool. Uh, how, what's your thoughts on um, Chatterjack? Do you just love torturing yourself over the course of 31 miles? Why do you keep going back to that one? <laughs> Why do I keep going back to Chatterjack? Because of the community of others there. I keep going back to Chatterjack less because of paddling 32 miles and more because I coach a lot of people that want to paddle 32 miles. And is that like the, the prom for client, Paddle Monster? <laughs> it's definitely our biggest showing of athletes at any one event. And not that Paddle Monster is just for athletes that want to paddle 32 miles. Paddle Monster, and especially this year, our main push is to be an online community for all paddlers, whether or not you want to do your first 5 or your first Chattajack or you want to do the Yukon, right? We've coached all that whole gamut of paddlers and we have programs and, we, you know, um, things that are, pr provide value for all, for all levels of paddlers. But I think our biggest niche and our biggest group and like I said, our biggest event that we have athletes on our platform training for is Chattajack because most people are like, okay, I can probably go out and manage a 5k. But most people go, shoot, I don't even know where to start to paddle 32 miles. Um, so we coach and, you know, write programs for people that do that. And so I love it when it's over. And <laughs> I love actually, it's usually really beautiful. The colors are changing. You've got current pushing you. Um, it's a, it's a very, it's a pretty big physical challenge and, but mostly I, I go for the people and I go for my Paddle Monster community to show support for that. How do you train for 31 mile race? Well, the last couple of years I didn't, <laughs> I was training for, were you on my program? <laughs> I was training for, <laughs> well, no, I was training for like the world tour races or you know my my training my the races that i was focusing my training program on were more like 10 to 20k yeah. and i maybe did one or two longer three hour maybe paddles to just make sure that my body still remembered how to do that the nice thing about building up a base and having a lot of distance paddling in my background is my body does know how to do that. Yeah. And I don't know, um, you can do incredible things simply by willpower alone. So if you really, if you really want to get to the finish, you're going to get to the finish. I watched your documentary on <laughs> chasing the midnight sun and it was pretty, pretty you're pretty out there, Chris Parker, but it's impressive. And I was definitely impressed. And, Thank you. um, that's a compliment coming from original... you. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, what was, Oh, how do I train for the chat Jack? Okay. That was the original question. Let's presume um, you did train. How would I look? <laughs> yeah. Let's presume I did train because at one point I did, I did train for chat Jack and I did train for like the 11 cities tour. And that's actually, I remember I paddled with you one year the way that you would. Yeah. That's pretty similar the way I would train because even though, so basically 11 city tour is like doing Chattajack five days in a row. Um, I'm not going to go out and train to do that five days in a row. I'm going to go out and train. People think with distance training that it's all about doing really long training sessions and going out for hours and hours and hours. And really it's more about the cumulative training that you get with consistently going out day after day after day and putting in quality work day after day after day. Because when you go and you do these super long efforts, you're pretty wrecked afterwards and you need a lot of time to recover and you're not going to put in quality work after that. So you get better training results when you do shorter more focused quality sessions 
con consistently and have a couple of longer paddles planned out at appropriate times to make sure that you've trained for you need those longer sessions to make sure that you've trained for your nutrition and your equipment and all of those things that you're going to use that are going to be really important to make sure that you can go for hours and hours. Um, the longer sessions are, are more about time on the water and dialing those things in than they are necessarily about, let's see how hard and how long I can keep pushing my body because, cause that, that hurts and then you have to recover and then you don't get to train until you're recovered. Right. So. Let me ask you, if you had to uh, pick one, one of your competitors, one of the fellow uh, women on tour or just at the events, who's the toughest to compete against? The, the toughest to compete against? That's an interesting, it's a tough question. Definitely last year, April was my biggest threat. Mm -hmm. She was right on my heels for the world title, for the APP world title, and she definitely had it um had a shot at it and i really admire april because she I think approaches her training in a similar way that i do and her lifestyle in a similar way that i do and you know we're both around the same age and we're you know we just there's so many more aspects to being a successful athlete than just the time that you put on the water yeah and i'm but i but if you mean like toughest as in like who's maybe like the most aggressive one out there sure give us really, give us the dirt <laughs> who bashes into everyone at the boy turn <laughs> Who's standing the boards between the legs? Some people would probably say me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I've had Is that your move? Hair. Just put the nose through the through their legs? No, I no, that's not my move. But I definitely, <laughs> I was playing catch up for several years in terms of the skill, especially at turns. And um, I think what I lacked in skill, I made up for in 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 grit. But that sometimes didn't always work out and sometimes you know people get like hey you know f off um but i definitely noticed this year i don't know exactly who was the toughest but i'll tell you what i did notice in 2019 last year when so most of the app races were probably predominantly the u.s women and we would get in these long draft trains and well, Lena was always there too. She's Canadian. Um, and we would get in these long draft trains and we would communicate and we would work together. And it was kind of nice. And then when you would go to a race in Europe <laughs> and you'd get all the like Spanish and the Frenchies in there, all of a sudden we were like, really like way more aggressive and pushing people out of the train and like it was just i i just noticed i i that and maybe it was just more paddlers or just paddlers that didn't paddle together as often and or it was just more competitive because we had more people represented but um you were there in bilbao the, i don't think they live streamed the woman's race but i'd never been in a more interesting uh in a more interesting race for the women because we had a at any given time um six women in the draft pack like mm. really fighting which i'm not used to and, and i came out at the bad end of that i ended up getting <laughs> six out of the six women that were in that draft pack because i was like oh this is not what i'm used to but um but i learned a lot right um so it's all what happened what what gets good. said at the boy turns especially in europe can you, have you oh. learned how to swear in French and Spanish? Uh, I can say a couple words in Spanish probably. <laughs> I mean, I can say, I can speak a lot of Spanish. I, I could say a couple of, of, but no, we all, we all pretty much speak English, I guess. Well, you know, the Frenchies speak French to each other and, and the Spanish speak Spanish to each other. But if we're communicating, you know, internationally, it's, it's generally English. And but what are you guys saying? Like What's if, there's, if there's a pile up at the buoy, is it just politely, oh, can you please move? Or is it 
get the F out of the way right now. Oh, no, it's more like get the F out of the way. You're like, hey, what the <laughs> F? Or like, you know. So there's passion out yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for well, sure. Well, that's good to see. <laughs> I know, really. It's like you, you're taking it. You know, it's not a leisurely stroll. You guys are fighting. Like, it's it's what you want to see in sport. It's, it's good, yeah. like good passion. Yeah. It is. It's good. Has there been Very any particular passion. race that stood out that was just um, – What's the most memorable race for you? Not the funnest, you know, not the not the best victory or anything, just something that stood out as an incredible event. Well, the one that first popped into my head, I'll go with that, and it's the 11 City Tour. And Which year? You that like, event you captured couple. my... I've won three. Mm. And that event first captured my heart because it was my very first international SUP event and I I went out and I just dominated and I just it was a very it was a coming of age event for me I think <laughs> in the sport yeah. and and then that event um I'm like tearing up right now <laughs> I'm kind of it emotional was, it was memorable but that then, event huh? also it was memorable that that year and then it was memorable and I, I mean I still think about that year and then it was memorable in, in 2018, um, the year that I had to dig myself out of a several minute hole and ended up putting on one of the most incredible performances of my life to win that last stage. Um, I'm going to try and find that, that video. It's really memorable and, and really that video. The I, best like, everyone's winner's reaction of all I'm time. I'm tearing right now. I, you, I couldn't even describe. I mean, I could describe, but it was, it was, that was an incredible day for me. The way that I, that way that I paddled. Tell us what happened. You were behind ahead. coming into the final stage, like Tour de France style. You had a lot of time to make up on the final stage, which is a solo time trial. I so you did. don't know. I did. I really, if you're winning or not, to the end. So I was behind. At one point, I was behind four and a half minutes, but then I, I, I made up a few, several seconds every day and when we went into the final stage i was two and a half minutes behind but it was a time trial so i started one minute ahead of yuka and i had to so i had to finish three and a half minutes ahead of her to win uh the overall and and she's behind me so i have no idea how far were you looking over your shoulder the whole time um, or did you just put your head down and for the Send first it. hour, I was looking over my shoulder, but once she was out of sight, and you know those canals, they wind and they, you know, there's there's not a lot of long straightaways where you can say, oh, okay, she's 400 meters back or whatever. You know, it's, um, it was like, I could kind of see a pink dot, you know, because even a minute, it's a pretty good head start. Um, and eventually I... I stopped looking back because I was like, well, it's, it's, it's too windy. And I, and I stopped seeing her, but I knew, I just knew, okay, I just need to get her out of sight because I can't, I have no idea what three and a half minutes looks like on the water. And again, there really wasn't a stretch that was th probably three and a half minutes long without making a turn. So I just, and by the last day of the 11 city tour, you know, um, your body is just, you've paddled, you know, almost 40, 50 kilometer every day. And your body is really, really, um, it's, you've already taken it to its limit. And then again, and then again. And so I just went into this, I went into this zone, you know, this flow state where, it was beyond all pain in my body because I, I had been in a lot of pain. Um, I was in pain for weeks after that. Um, but I just, I said, it doesn't matter <laughs> what happens tomorrow. It doesn't matter if you never paddle another day again in your life. Just keep, just paddle as hard as you can. Like, like there is no tomorrow. Like you're never going to paddle another day in your life. Just like, I literally put it all out there and, um, it's, it's an incredible feeling to, to, to get to like dig that deep and find that place in yourself because I think 
a lot of athletes, um, you have to really be into ultra endurance to find that space. I'm sure you've found that space out in the Yukon. <laughs> um, I just started hallucinating. And That's my space. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't start hallucinating because I was getting sleep at night, but, um, and it was only a hundred and or 220 kilometers, not yeah, it's, 700 a, it's a sprint, 50. really. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally sprint. You want to watch the video? I um, found it. We've got audio and everything. You want to relive really this want moment? To see me cry. I want to. I want to see this. This is one of my favorite videos I've ever posted. Let's um, let's bring it on here. I have to beat her by three. Wait. Here we go. I'm not telling you yet. You're not telling me. Okay, 30 seconds, come on, 30 seconds! Everybody else already knew. <laughs> 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 That's um that was definitely a memorable victory celebration. Seychelle, I love that video. Thank you. Thanks for Bringing making that video. I love it too. Bringing back some memories. Yeah, definitely. Would you go back? Fourth one? Um, I would I would totally go back. I would have gone back last year, but it was right in between there was uh, New York was one weekend, 11 City Tour was the next week, and then Osaka was the week after that. And since I was leading in points on the APP World Tour at that point, I decided I really just needed to focus on the World Tour and I couldn't do the 11 City Tour in, in between. Because again, at least two weeks afterwards, you, your body's just wrecked. Mm. My doggy wants to say hi. <laughs> What's his name? Oh, wait, there he is. Oscar. Oh, look at that. Look he at actually face. just wants to go to the beach. <laughs> yeah, he's a cutie pie. Well, sorry. Okay. Messing up the... Okay. No worries. All right. Just a couple more things I want to um, I want to chat with you about. Then we'll uh, we'll let Oscar go for a walk after that. What's your, uh, what's your take on the, uh, the state of um, the paddle ticks in the sport? I know uh, you've competed... Um, all around the world, how do you see it with this whole, you know, Olympic fight? Is there a solution or is it just, oh. is it just endless politics? The solution between who's taking SUP to the Olympics. Yeah, between just, I mean, ICF not necessarily even just picking, not picking a side, but like, how do we solve this? It just seems so distracting and so frustrating for a lot of paddlers. <sighs> It's like the selfish yes, parents it's a good arguing question. of a custody. I think that it's in a lot of ways good for, well, the good thing is that there are two federations fighting over the sport. So the sport's getting a lot of attention and at least there's, you know, it's not like no one wants to bring it to the Olympics, right? Um, yeah. I do think that... It's a luxury problem. I'm not... I, I don't have any... I haven't been to an ICF event. I don't have any experience with the ICF. So I can't really form a judgment on mm. the ICF and how I think that federation would handle SUP. I... I'm willing to give them a shot. I would have gone to the event last year, but it was the same weekend as Chattajack. Mm. And so we'll, I think they've already canceled for this year and postponed till 2021. 2021 in Hungary. So I won't. Tentatively scheduled. For 2021, right? Yeah. I think end of the summer in Hungary. Yeah. So 
uh, we'll see if I'm still around. In October. <laughs> you might be somewhere in the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic on your yacht. I might be living in a yacht. Uh, I might be making babies somewhere. We'll see. Um, well, every other paddler seems to be so, doing that. Get on, get on the bandwagon, yeah, Seychelles. Right. Come on, catch up. Yeah, I've been, I've been putting it off. I've been putting off making a family for a while because I just, I mean, it's not. It's not, uh, I'm kind of on the, the Lena timeline, right? Like just push, you know, push as hard as I can do as much as I can now. And then, and then focus on the, on the family afterwards. And I'm not, I'm not going to go away from the sport, but it definitely won't be the same once you're, you know, a mother and, and all the responsibilities that come along with that. So, um, but in terms of the ISA, I, I, Honestly, I don't get a very good vibe off of them, but I can't really, I can't really say too much um, because I, you know, they are, they are supporting the APP a lot and I do support the APP and I think the APP World Tour is trying to do, trying to do good things. Um, I think there's a lot of people trying to do good things. I just... I think some of them are doing them with good intentions and some of them are doing them with selfish intentions. And mm. I just don't know. I just don't know enough, but I did, um, I did choose to not go to the ISAs in 2019 or 2018. Um, because I just didn't feel it was the right, um, world championship to support, you know? Yeah. So, but I can't say what what's what's going to happen this sport. Again, it's good that there's that it's it we're kind of having to st I think this sort sport of sup needs to step up into the role and the sport that it that it needs to be and even to go to the Olympics. So I don't think we're even ready yet as a sport to go to the yeah. Olympics. So, having it on the radar I think is is good because we're we're having to develop into that sport and hopefully that's going to keep happening, but it's, um, yeah, I agree with you there. We're definitely we're not, not ready. there yet. Well, hopefully this, uh, this downtime, yeah. this limbo period is going to give people a chance to get creative and hopefully we'll come through it with a, uh, a more evolved format for the sport. But, um, speaking of evolved formats, do you want to see something very special? That's got your name on it quite literally. Okay, sure. Check it out. This is your official okay. entry into the Marble Racer World Tour. Wait, it's blocked by a thing on my screen. All right, we're, we'll put it down here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> cool. It's the Seychelles Marble. <laughs> We've got one for uh, all the top paddlers here. We're actually, I'm going to start, where is it there on the screen? I'm going to be starting a, oh. um, a Marble Racer Tour. We're going to start with the Marble Liner Cup in a couple of weeks. And um, go right through the season because <laughs> I'm losing my mind not being able to commentate. That's like my happy place when I can just talk at a million miles an hour and, you know, watch all you guys do your thing. So we're going to recreate it hey, with marbles. There's plenty of that to be happening on Facebook right now. Just just put up a, a post that says anything about coronavirus and you can commentate all <laughs> day long. <laughs> I'm avoiding the conspiracy awesome. theories and all of the uh, <laughs> the drama. I'm I'm happy in my little zen zone out here. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a people strange are so time. scared. It's like, it's just uh, it's a media fed hype. Yeah, but I think it's. Um, I mean, society. There's so much distrust at the moment for, like, suddenly being a journalist is not like journalism used to be the most reputable career and now it's like oh you're a journalist like they just think it's fake news or what it's so unhealthy like the toxicity in um our political and media environment and it seems i know i don't want to pick on america because a lot of countries are actually amplifying it even it. more <laughs> but i mean Amer america is you know it's the voice of the western world so we see what's happening over there and we sometimes scratch our heads and say what on earth we do too we do too <laughs> but um Oh gosh, I probably shouldn't. I probably shouldn't get in. We probably should it. end it before we television. get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I don't own a. I don't own a television. I don't scroll through Facebook. I just live, you know, in a happy little bubble, and I just try and share that as much as I can with others. Well, let's stay in that happy little bubble here, and um, yeah, 
<laughs> we'll end it on that note because I've actually got to give uh, your buddy Larry a call in five minutes. He's next up on Paddlecast okay. Quarantine Edition. So we're going to have a chat with Thanks so much, old Chris. man Kane. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. And it's morning over there. So I hope you have yeah. a beautiful day. Take Oscar for a walk. Thank you. Yeah, and, thank um, you so much. Everybody jump on Paddle Monster Facebook. They're doing Instagram. So they're doing uh, Facebook Lives every day at 3 p.m. Florida time. Get on it, folks. Seychelles, a champion on Off the Water. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let's catch up again soon. Thanks, Chris. Have right. a great day. Bye.